The box score filed in Columbus, Ohio on March 6, 2005, tells us Ohio State's Matt Sylvester scored 25 points that day. The game notes tell us Sylvester's output was a career high. But only a first-hand account can tell us what it felt like to make a game-winning shot against an unbeaten top-ranked opponent. Jordan Cornette walks Sylvester down memory lane in this edition of I Hit It to Win It. There was definitely a buzz in the arena that day. This place seats around 19.5. I'm pretty sure there was a butt in every single seat. What was your impression of that Illinois team? Those guys were such a beautiful team to watch because they played the right way, they shared the ball. There was some incredible individual talent, obviously, but they played so cohesively together, and it was just truly a beautiful team to watch. Top ranked in a perfect 29-0. Did you guys even think you had a chance in that game? No, we didn't. We, we literally didn't even think we had a chance in that game, which is bad to say as players. How much did ruining their perfect season factor in his motivation coming into that game? I think it definitely did. You know, we obviously knew that every media outlet in the country would be there. Illinois was chasing the 1976 Indiana team. We went into halftime. I can't remember exactly how much we were down, but they just were commanding the game. Illinois led most of the game. It figured to be their day, but you clawed your way back late in the game. What was the difference? I think the difference was just toughness, and also I, I really think the stars kind of aligned on that night. You know, I think Illinois had an off night, and we, in the second half, had a great night. 18 seconds left in the game, you're trailing by two. What's Coach Mata saying to you guys in that timeout? Thad comes storming into the huddle, and he says, we're going for the win. And I mean, we went nuts. And Thad actually had to say, like, hey, fellas, we haven't even drawn the play up. Let's, let's take it easy here. All right, just about 12 seconds left, down by two, side out of bounds. Take me through the play, guys. All right, Jordan. So I catch the sideline out of bounds about right here. Um, so my first um, goal was to get it to the middle. So center, so I took a couple dribbles to the middle, bend it back kind of to the sideline, waiting for Tony to come around the screen, sure. and then the play happens. And at this point, uh, Terrence and I were sitting here in a double screen. We were facing this way. Tony Stockman was in the deep corner. Tony was such a good shooter that we used him as a decoy. Okay. He was definitely so, the decoy. So Tony goes through, then what? Tony goes through and, and takes the attention of Jerron Williams and Roger Powell away from us, which gives us a little room to where Terrence set a monster down screen. And all I literally had to do was take two steps back, catch the pass, and at this point, I couldn't even believe I was this open. So I simply had to step in. Matt Sylvester, right wing, shoots a three. Yes! Matt Sylvester knocks it down as he knocked down the biggest shot of his life. And then I put my one finger in the air, and I don't know why I chose this, but that's just kind of what came to mind. And Ran down the court and got ready to play D. The Buckeyes upset number one, Illinois, 65-64. Game's over, clock expires, students are running on the floor. What is going through your mind at that point? It's just kind of one of those days where the rim looks as big as the ocean and you just have that feeling that anything you throw up is going to go in. And I don't know why that day was my day, but I'm glad I was able to step up to the occasion. I'm Matt Sylvester and I hit it to win it.